Hello, and thank you for joining me today. Hello. So six different people recommended I watch this. See, six different people pasted this video right here. Northern Germany, meet the Germans road trip. Part one out of four. So I guess we got us a series. Um, I assume I'm going to have to watch the other three parts. But the only thing requested more often than this was a blank answer, which 10 people responded with, which I assume means they want me just to delete my channel. All right, DW Euro Max, legendary channel. This is gonna be great. And it's Northern Germany. All the Northern Germans out there are always like, yo, react to some Northern Germany stuff. All right, so here we go. Moin. Moin. Hey. Moin. Moin. I really hope this is in English. Moin. Moin. Welcome Moin. to the first leg of our meeting. Yes, it's my favorite host. German's road trip. And as you might have guessed from those greetings right there, we're up north. Look at the reflector on her right now. You know that the dude, there's a dude holding the camera and another dude with a reflector right by him. According to the Happiness Atlas, this is where many of the happiest Germans live. That doesn't necessarily oh, wow. mean that you'll feel the happiness oozing out of them. The Northerners are known for their... <laughs> they keep it hidden. I like that. ...cool approach and for being... <laughs> They're really happy, but they walk around like... You wouldn't know it. They're the happiest people on earth. ...people a few words. Moin doesn't actually mean morning. It's thought to come oh. from the low German for good, and it can be used as a greeting at any time of day. Oh, You okay. might also hear moin moin, but in some areas that's thought to be over the top. <laughs> Over the top. Moin moin. For our jaunt around northern Germany, we'll be visiting the states of Mecklenburg-Vorpommern, Schleswig-Holstein, and Niedersachsen, as well as Excellent. two of Germany's three city-states, Hamburg and Bremen. <laughs> doesn't get any more north than this. Don't be deceived. While the weather kind of seems okay today, these guys are never far away. To describe the typical northern weather, let's use some local terminology. Schmuddelwetter, essentially... Schmuddelwetter. So that means mud and water. Dirty weather. I was right. Or sheet better. Yes, that's weather that's, well, sheet. <laughs> so we're talking cold, wet. Sheet weather. I love it. And with a good dose of wind. And <laughs> Did she mean to do that? Break her umbrella? Wet. And with a good dose of wind. Yeah, it was And what broke. does the north of Germany actually look like? Well, it's pretty flat and pretty green. There's more than oh, kind of looks like Indiana. One and a half thousand kilometers of coastline. Oh, well, a little bit more beautiful. I'm as be well honest. as many islands. More than half yeah. the land in the north is used for agriculture. There are various large companies based here, for example, car and ship manufacturers, and tourism oh. plays a big part in the coastal economy. The northeastern state of Mecklenburg Vorpommern cool. is the least densely populated state in Germany, with just 69 people what per is this square camera? kilometer. But what it lacks in people, it makes. That's the cameraman trying to be a little too creative. I'm sorry, I'm going to be paying attention to what she's saying now. State in Germany, with just 69 people per Mecklenburg Vorpommern, is the least densely populated state in Germany, okay. with just 69 people per square kilometer. But oh, okay. what it lacks in people, it makes up for in lakes. In fact, it boasts Europe's largest landlocked lake district. Mechpom is the only new like lakes. or former East German state in the north of Germany. You can still see a few reminders of this era, for example, in its Plattenbau or prefab architecture uh -huh. and long stretches yep. of iconic Akar nudist beaches. Perhaps the most iconic <laughs> symbol of German beaches is the Strandkorb or beach basket. It was invented here in Rostock in the what late 1800s as a comfortable solution for wind battered tourists on the Baltic coast. What is Today, that? Today you can rent them along much of Germany's coastal areas and islands. What do you do with it? Talking of islands, I honestly had no idea that Germany had any islands until I moved here, which is pretty embarrassing. Neither. I had no idea. You have islands? But I'm still focused on this bench that you can rent and drag with you. What do you do? Drag this huge church pew with you across the sand? You rent this and then you drag it? The church pew with, a, with an umbrella on top of it? This is cool. I like it. Um, I've never seen anything like it, but I, that's why I like it. And considering it has more than 40 of them, you've got your more... 40 of what? 
which is oh, islands. pretty embarrassing considering it has more than 40 of them. You've got your wow. more schickimicki Zult, where you can do a bit of German celeb spotting. For the best chance of sun, head to Fehmarn or Rügen, mm. or venture further out to the Helgoland Archipelago. Then there's the chain of East Friesian wow. islands, many of which are car-free or car-restricted zones. It's like Hawaii. I've taken the ferry over to one of the larger islands, Nordanai, in order to get a feel for German island life. Yeah, here's ruhig. Ruhiger. Wie auf dem Festland. Definitiv entspannter. Man braucht kein Auto. Und ganz gesunde Luft. Man schläft ja wie tot. Hier ist so ein bisschen heile Welt noch. Im Winter haben wir ein bisschen Ruhe. Jetzt haben wir ein bisschen Trubel. Ne? Da leben wir natürlich von. Hier hat man Ruhe, Sportbewegung. Die Work-Life-Balance ist einfach fantastisch. This is so interesting, seeing this like salt. You know, here in, here in America, it's called salt life. The people who love to live by the ocean and have boats and stuff, they're the salt life. Hashtag salt life. Um, I, d I don't think of Germany as having this like type of community, but here they are. This is also a really rich area for biodiversity. The Battenmeer is the world's largest unbroken system of intertidal sand and mudflats, and a large part of it is found along Germany's North Sea coast. It's a vital site for migratory birds, and it's home to numerous plant species and animals like seals and harbour port voices. That's a... that's an animal? A harbour port voices? What is that? One thing that connects all the northern states is language. Low German, known as Plattdeutsch or Niederdeutsch, is an officially recognized and protected regional language. It's descended from Old Saxon, and it has many different local dialects, such as Hamburger Platt and Mecklenburgisches Niederdeutsch. While High German has been encroaching steadily since the 1950s, Platt is still widely spoken among the older generation, and efforts have been made to preserve the language, for example with radio shows and lessons in schools. And some young people are also keen to keep their linguistic heritage alive. Moin Leflü, Moin Leflü, Moin Leflü, ich bin Dieke und für das werde Plattdeutsch dünnen. Ja, ich bin Dieke, ich bin Twin. This is interesting because I've been meaning to learn more about the difference between low and high German. Because I always see like memes about it and such. I always assume high German is like what the fancy people talk in high German. You're old, ich komme. He's an Instagrammer. Wow, good for you, man. That's a cool job. Instagrammer. Und Aurk oder und Südbrockmanland in der Nähe von Aurk und Mittelwil lebe ich hier auf der Insel in der Nähe. Ich glaube, das Plattdeutsche ist einfach wirklich super natürlich und es wird einfach frei Schnauze geredet und selbst die bösesten Schimpfwörter klingen irgendwie lustig und man man ja, man nimmt's nicht nicht übel. Es ist halt in der Vergangenheit eben häufig so gewesen. It's funny. I thought he said you can't take it back. I'm like, you're right. After you say a swear word, you, you can't take it back. It's It's been said. No, you can't take it badly. Okay. Older people often didn't pass. Oh, ...dass das, das ältere Personen ihren Kindern oder ihren Enkeln das nicht mehr beigebracht haben, weil es dann immer hieß, die können dann niemals wirklich Hochdeutsch sprechen oder das gab da immer so ein paar Hi, Vorurteile Janet. in der Vergangenheit und das kann ich halt total widerlegen. Mir hat das sogar eher noch viel gebracht, weil das auch ähnlich zum Englischen zum Teil oh. ist und dadurch ist mir zum Beispiel... So it's called Low German or Plot. Ich finde das Englisch lernen eigentlich relativ leicht gefallen dann in der Schule. Ja, also es ist eben... Ein Teil von Ostfriesland und auch ein Teil von Norddeutschland. Das ist eben was, was bewahrt werden muss. Back in the day, Low German was also the Seemannssprache, nautical language, and Hansa-Sprache, Hanseatic or trade language. And that's our cue. I guess the Seemannssprache is like a seaman. Is that, did I get that? For a little walk down memory lane. A man of the, the sea. The Hanseatic League was an organization of merchant guilds, ports, and market towns that dominated trade in northern Europe from what a time the 13th to be alive. 15th century. And it all began here in northern Germany. Hansa was a medieval German Look word at this for place. guild or association, and the Hanseatic League was set up in order to protect mutual trading interests, from tax arrangements to defense against pirates. Lübeck and Schleswig-Holstein had easy access to both the North and Baltic Seas. It was the hub of the Hanseatic League and one of the most important trading posts in Northern Europe. Many Northern cities like Lübeck, Wismar or Stralsund still wear their Hansestadt or Hanseatic city titles with pride. Have you ever wondered why cars registered in Hamburg have HH number plates? No, I haven't, because I didn't know that. That stands for Hansestadt Hamburg. Ah, Hansa. Okay, they, they, okay. And here we are. They still wear it with pride, like she said. Ah, in Germany's second largest city. It boasts the third largest harbor in Europe, the largest warehouse district in the world, way more bridges than Venice, and more than a hundred swans, a symbol this of the city's beautiful. historical sovereign status. 
This northern metropolis is also known for its Reeperbahn Red Light District, its striking oh. Elbe Philharmonie Concert Hall, and fish, fish, fish. Hamburg is also the youngest German state, with an average age of just over 42. I also don't think of Germany as like a place to eat fish. But I guess here in Hamburg, that's where we are, right? We're still in Hamburg. Okay. Ah, incidentally, red brick architecture, particularly Backstein Gothic or Brick Gothic, is typical of northern Germany, which lacks sufficient natural supplies of building stone. Anyway, back to the fish. Unsurprisingly, seafood is a staple of northern cuisine. An absolute classic is Matthias soused herring. That looked terrifying. Other traditional dishes up north include kohl und pinkel, that's kale and smoked sausage, and various hearty soups and stews. Labskaus was originally whipped up from long-lasting and various What the hell is this? Stew. I'm sorry, but you got just pickles with your egg? Lab was originally whipped up from long-lasting ingredients for sailors on long trips at sea. It's kind of a mush of corned beef and potato. If you're lucky, you might get some pickled herring and a fried egg on top. Mmm. Fancy... <laughs> that was the most unappetizing thing I have ever seen so far come out of Germany. Something sweet. I'm sorry. Allow me to introduce you to one of my... I mean, it's between that and the raw pork that you spread on bread. My all-time favorite German food, which was invented right here in Hamburg. The Franzbrötchen. Think cinnamon Ooh, swirl, no, but even that better. Looks good. <laughs> yeah. That looked phenomenal. And of course, we can't neglect the beer. Exactly which brand you drink depends largely on where you are. Here in Bremen, just as everywhere else, there's plenty of local pride involved. It's interesting how the beer bottle is so ubiquitous, you know what I'm saying? Like, wow, they look exactly the same here. But here in the north, we're generally talking some kind of pilsner. But there's a... And everywhere. Another drink that I've had on my bucket list for ages. Ostfriesen tea. I don't know why that actually, like... I was like, oh my god, she's hitting me in the forehead with a, a beer bottle. Move over Turkey and Great Britain. Ostfriesland is apparently the tea drinking capital of the world. The East Friesians really? drink an average of 300 liters of tea a year. And the... Jesus Christ, are you guys okay? There's a whole ritual involved. I've come to Lair, the birthplace of East Frisian tea, to get initiated in a traditional tea ceremony. That's yes. Hold on, hold on. I'm still doing the math on this. 300 liters of tea a year. 300 liters, that's like a liter every day. How can you drink a liter of tea a day for the whole population on average? Yeah. And there's a whole ritual involved. I've come to Lair, the birthplace of East Frisian tea, to get initiated in a traditional tea ceremony. Als erstes braucht man erstmal einen schönen Candy Sugar. Kürtje. Der kommt zuerst in die Tasse. Dann gießt man den Tee wow. ein. Und das knistert jetzt ein bisschen. Oh wow. Mm. Der Tee ist schön dunkel und kräftig. Das ist ein kräftiger Assam-Tee. Dann braucht man Sahne. Und das machen wir immer. Entgegen dem you have to do it anti-clockwise. Uhrzeigersinn, weil wir beim Tee trinken die Zeit anhalten möchten. <lacht> ah. Und das Ganze nennt sich dann das wow. Wulkje, weil das aussieht wie eine kleine Wolke. Umrühren darf ich nicht, oder? Nein, es wird einfach so in Schichten getrunken. Also man trinkt gleich erstmal so diese sahnige Schicht und dann trinkt man langsam eben sich durch bis zum letzten süßen Schluck. Mm. Die Menschen... This is quite fascinating. Um, also, doesn't it take forever for that rock of sugar to dissolve? How slow do you drink this tea that you're, you're trying to like, there's a whole rock in there of sugar and you're not even stirring it. Wouldn't that take forever to dissolve? haben ja hier früher sehr viel auch draußen gearbeitet. Es war oft schlechtes Wetter, es war kalt, es war nass. Und da war so eine, eine Tee, Pause, sehr willkommen, weil der Tee ist schön heiß. Außerdem wird bei der Zubereitung von Tee ja das Wasser abgekocht. Und das war sehr gut, weil das Wasser war oft sehr keimhaltig hier in Ostfriesland. Die Leute wurden krank, wenn die das Wasser so nicht abgekocht getrunken haben. Als Ostfriese wächst man da einfach rein und ähm, man weiß eigentlich gar nicht, wie man anders Tee trinken kann. <lacht> Don't be surprised if your host tops you up immediately. Apparently, it's commonplace to drink at least three cups. Then you should. Oh, there you go. That's how you drink a freaking liter every day. 
who's the host, just doesn't let you stop. So that you've had your fill by placing your teaspoon in your cup. Please leave oh. your top tips for Northern Germany in the comments, and I'll see you soon as the Meet the Germans road trip continues. Oh, I got it. So this first one was North Germany. Oh, wow, we're doing West. I think we're going to do South. We're going to do East. We're going to do West. I'm excited now. Um, I mean, assuming that this video, we'll see. If you if the if the thumbs up are are high on this video compared to the thumbs down, then I will watch all the other ones. Maybe in a row, you know, like tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day. Well, I might put some I usually do the meme reactions. Okay. Anyway, I don't know why I'm like still talking. Thank you guys for watching. Go check out DW Euromax. I'm glad that this thing just popped back up even though I told it to go down. Um, yeah, link down below. Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Maybe for the West? That's what it looked like was next, I think. Goodbye.